Today we're going to be talking about vectors. We're going to start off by talking a little bit about vector geometry, which is sort of our, our basic concept of what vectors look like and how they interact with each other. Then we'll talk about the components of vectors and vector algebra. And we'll lastly talk about the applications of vectors. Now vectors are something that are both intuitive and non-intuitive at the same time. They, there are certain parts of it which make complete sense when you just look at the pictures, and then they have some features that are maybe not quite so intuitive. Uh, we use vectors a lot in mathematics, uh, not just in pure math, but we also see them in lots of applications of math. So for example, in physics, almost everything you talk about, velocity, position, acceleration, those things can be written in terms of vectors and discussed in terms of vectors. We also use vectors a lot in uh, uh, biology and environmental science applications, especially things like predator-prey models, where we'll use vectors to represent the population of two different uh, animal types. And so there's a lot to do with vectors here that uh, on the surface, we're not going to be able to see them in this class because there's just not enough time and it's not part of where we're going. But having that basic language in the background is very useful to have so that when you run into those applications, you're already uh, in a position where you can get started uh, get started with them and understanding what's going on in those other applications. Okay, so what is a vector? Vectors are objects that have length and direction. And when we draw them, we usually draw them as arrows so that we can indicate both the starting position and the ending position. Uh, even though we talk about the starting position and ending position, we don't actually care about them per se. We actually care about the motion from here to here, which means that if I draw another arrow next to it like this, pretend these two things were exactly the same, we would say that these are the same vector because they represent the same direction and the same length. And so we can also think of this as motion. If we start from here and move by this vector to get over here, that movement is the same as this movement. So vectors, remember, vectors have length and direction. Now for any particular representation of a vector, we can talk about the initial point and terminal point. So initial point and terminal point. Uh, sometimes we call the initial point the tail of the vector, and we'll call the terminal point the head of the vector, uh, so the head of an arrow. And so the, we want to figure out a way of representing these things and talking about them. Uh, so if we look at a specific example where we have a vector that points from the point P, which is negative 1, comma, negative 2, to the point Q, 3, 3, all we're doing is we're drawing an arrow that starts from negative 1, negative 2. So negative 1, negative 2 is down here. And then 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 is up here. And we care about the vector that points from here to there. Or at least the vector that represents that motion. Again, this vector would be the exact same thing if I slide, if I slide everything over uh, a certain amount. And so this is the framework. Vectors, we have direction and uh, we have a direction and length. Uh, we can talk about a specific representation of a vector, but we have to remember that this is only a representation of a vector. That there are also lots and lots of other representations of the same vector defined by the motion that it creates. So now that we have vectors, the question is what can we do with them? Let's start off by just sort of playing around with some intuition. Let's say that this is a box. And I have one person pushing this way on the box and one person pushing that way on the box. The question is, what direction will the box be moving? Hopefully, your intuition says that it will be moving in this direction, so up and right. Uh, similarly, if we have a box, we have one person pushing this way and one person pushing that way. Whoops, let's make those the same. Then we should end up with a box that's really not going anywhere at all. The two people are canceling each other out. If I have a situation where I have a small push going this way, but then a much larger push going that way, you'd expect the net direction of the box to be going this way. And all these pictures start to indicate to us the basic intuition of what it means to add vectors together. Now, ultimately, these pictures are just intuition, so we have to come to a more mathematical perspective. And so the basic geometry of adding vectors 
goes by the idea of head to tail. What does that mean? So let's say I have a vector v, and I'm going to add it to a vector u. What is the result going to be? The result is going to be, we'll start with the vector v, and then we'll put the, the head of v to the tail of u. So here's v, u goes like this, and the resultant vector, the vector that is the sum of these two things, start from the tail of the first and go to the head of the last. So that is u plus v, and that's often called the resultant vector. And so this is the basic idea. Uh, and you can sort of see the intuition sort of matching up here. If I, uh, with this first one, if I do this plus this, I will get an angle going this way. If I do this and then that and put the head to tail, I'm going to get back to where I started from. And then this plus that is going to push me all the way over here. And so that's the idea. Uh, we can also do uh, multiply vectors by a scalar. Mo whoops, mult. Wow, that was bad. Multiply, multiply a vector by a scalar. Now what's a scalar? A scalar is just a number. And in fact, the word scalar here should remind you of scale, like to scale something, uh, stretch something out to make it bigger or smaller. So if we have the vector v here, then the vector 2 times v would be twice as long, but in the same direction. So we've scaled this vector out by a factor of 2. If we use a negative number, if we have negative v that takes the vector and flips it around, so that it points in the other direction. Uh, let's move that over there where it makes it a little bit easier to see. And so this is the idea. So what I want you to do is take a moment and try to do these sums with these two vectors right here. I'll redraw them down here. Here's v and here's u. Take a moment and try to work out what 3u looks like, what negative u looks like, and then what u minus v looks like. Now this last one I'm going to just tell you to try it and see if you can figure out what's going on. And uh, my hint is of course the previous one uh, with the negative u to sort of think about that one. Uh, but take a moment and give it a try and see whether you can uh, figure out what these vectors look like. Okay, so for 3u, if that's u, then we want vector in the same direction. I'm going to draw, draw u again down here. Same direction, but three times as long. So 3u, 1, 2, 3, would look something like this. Negative u, same arrow, but in the opposite direction. So negative u, like that. And then u minus v, this is the one that would, is the most interesting to think about. The way we want to think about u minus v is that it's equal to u plus negative v. Subtraction is addition of the opposite. You've seen this before with integers and real numbers, and so the same thing applies here. So our vector u looks like this. The vector v is this thing, but turned around, so it's going to go like this. So that's negative v. And so if we take these two things together and u plus negative v, u, so put the tail of negative v to the head of u, and then I need to change colors again. The resultant vector is going to be this, u minus v. It starts from the tail of the first and ends with the head of the last. And so this is the basic geometry of vectors.